definitely a mindset shift that you got to have when you're building community. And if you, specifically if you're a creator with somebody who, who's used to this world of audience building is you're not going to measure the value of your community with the number of likes and comments that posts get. It's going to be much deeper than that. You're going to have to look at the level of connections between your members. Um, you're going to have to look at, you know, maybe you have some passive lur lurkers, people who are, who are not really actively participating. They're like, maybe the shy students at the back of the classroom who are really soaking in everything that's happening and they're getting value, right? Hey there, this is Deb. Welcome back to the Community Strategy Podcast. I am just jumping into this episode to let you know about the next uh, episode that's coming here. The Director of Community from Circle, Mathilde, she's uh, going to jump in and tell you all about how she started building community, what Circle's been doing, what they're up to, um, how her team really helped her in challenging times, and she talks about the features of Circle. They dropped over 100 in the last year. Uh, they have just apparently are dropping live streaming. Uh, they're getting feedback from customers directly through that customer community that they have set up. And she just gives some really great tips for community builders when we're talking about engagement. And she has she runs this 10,000, over 10,000 member community at this point. She has um, been doing this with Circle since uh, for the last three and a half years, she said. And uh, so here it is. Hello, and welcome back to the Community Strategy Podcast. I'm your host, Deb Shell, And today I'm excited to uh, introduce you to a, a brand new guest that's never been on our podcast before. And she is she's the head of community. Her name is Mathilde Leo. Perfect. You got it. <laughs> Leo. She's the head of community and customer education at Circle, an all-in-one community pro platform that helps building with building programs, courses, and online events for entrepreneurs, startups, and nonprofits. Uh, she's building an online community. She's built, been building online communities from scratch since 2021 and was the first community hire of and number 11. She was instrumental in crafting and implementing Circle's original community-led strategy. So we're going to talk about that today as, as, her, as well as her managing over 10,000 plus customers and a community. Um, before Cir Circle, she was the co-founder of Making Jam, which I hope we get to chat about as well, um, leading a European product professional conference. And she's done so many more things, but I will let her say hello and introduce yourself a little bit. Welcome to the Community Strategy Podcast. Oh, thank you so much, Deb. What a great intro. Love it. I think <laughs> we should always have somebody else introducing us everywhere we go in life because it's great. <laughs> um, no, I'm super happy to be here uh, on your podcast. Uh, and yeah, talk about community, my journey, anything you want to learn more about, whether that's circle related or yeah, the community for product managers that I started uh, in, in what feels like a lifetime away now, but that's how I got into community in the first place. So <laughs> that's what I was going to ask. So let's start with that, just because everybody has kind of different ways they come into community. If you talk to community builders, they're, they're like online, they're like, oh yeah, I kind of did this they didn't plan to do this. Um, so I was curious if you had always wanted to be an online community uh, manager or pers person or not. <laughs> yeah, great question. Um, not surprisingly not. That's something I, I did by accident, like many people in our industry. So the way I got into the community industry or community as a profession was really by um, creating my own community. And that also happened by accident. So I, I started my career in London uh, as, a, as a product manager. So I worked for many for different early stage startups. And in the process of doing that, I was just, you know, facing a lot of imposter syndrome, you know, early in my career, uh, trying to figure out like, am I doing the right thing? Like, am I working, you know, with designers and engineers the right way? What can I learn? All of this stuff. So um, my co-founder and I at the time, uh, who was the head of design in the startup, we created this conference, this event for product managers. And our idea was like, let's gather people to tell the stories that the, the, the stories behind great products. That was a tagline, a tagline. So how do people at Spotify, Strava, Facebook, like all kinds of products out there build products and navigate their, their careers? And so long story short, that event made babies. It became a series of events. We did some retreats as well for heads of product. And, and, and it became a community a little bit by accident with you know, thousands, thousands of people gathering in person for those events, those experiences. And after a while, I actually was able to run this community uh, full-time and, and make it my full-time job and that's when I realized oh wow community is something I really I'm really passionate about I love bringing people together I love playing 
you know, a small part in their professional journey, but it's now also something they can do for, for a living. And so that's what got me into, uh, that's what got, got me on the path that I'm on today, being the head of community at Circle. Um, I'm happy to <laughs> to expand on any of that, but uh, I was well, actually a customer of Circle, uh, running that community during COVID. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was curious about. So uh-huh. that's so yeah. So you you started with using very much similar to my own journeys, mm-hmm. um, uh, starting to have your own community, and then you had a successful community, and it just spun off from there. And you said in person events. It had a hybrid model with in person and online events. It sounds like. So at the time it was fully in person because it was, you know, pre-COVID. Um, and that's how also we we stood out at the time, uh, really trying to create experiences where people come together around food, around like music. It was not just, you know, a, a typical conference uh, as you know it. Uh, but then during COVID, obviously, we transitioned to an uh, an online model, a membership model. And that's how I, that's how I first uh, discovered Circle that was in beta at the time. It was a very, very early stage product. Really fell in love with the product. I started hosting, you know, um, or at least transitioning my community to a membership model. And that's how I, I started. I was also at the end of a chapter, you know, after doing it for five, six years, I was like, you know what? I'm really ready for something new. I want to work for an early stage startup again, be really close to a product that I really believe in. And at the time, Circle was looking for the first uh, community hire, the head of community to build the community function from the ground up to figure out, you know, how can we help? creators, community builders, um, build thriving communities online, uh, gather their people. And so, yeah, I was super excited to, 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 to get a chance to kind of like help people solve some of the challenges that I had faced in my own journey as a community builder, um, you know, running and making jam. Yeah. So tell story. me, <laughs> tell me a couple of things that you, uh, experience as you, and, uh, just to clarify, so circle is an online platform. You might want to explain like a little bit more in detail what circle is, and then tell us some of the roadblocks that, that you, uh, hit as you experience this community building. hundred <laughs> percent. So circle is a, is a community platform for creators and brands. It's kind of like, what you could call the, the 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 modern community platform form out there. It's really is about gathering all of your discussions, your events, your content all in one place. You can charge for access. You can monetize any parts of your community offering, and so it's not being really used by tens of thousands of of people out there, like sophisticated, successful creators who run you know multi million uh, courses or businesses on Circle, all the way up to people who do it maybe more for fun or as a hobby and who want to just gather their maybe top followers and, and bring them from, from social media to a more uh, private um, own space, which runs on Circle. So that's kind of what Circle is. Um, in terms of uh, roadblocks, you mean when I started at Circle or when? Well, just as a community builder initially, yeah. I know you said it grew over time and you did it during the pandemic. And so mm-hmm. I wanted to kind of learn um, what you experienced during that time, if we could rewind back to that time. Or a specific, yeah, because definitely if, if we rewind at a specific time, definitely the challenges were were different than the challenges I have now as a team lead or as, as you know, somebody running a team of community managers. But yeah, so I would say it was a very special time and there were loads of things happening online. And then I think at the time during COVID in particular, people were, so it was not a roadblock, but more like an opportunity that we had. People were looking for belonging. They were looking for connection. They were isolated. They wanted to, you know, to find their people online. And so it was this very special moment of like, I remember joining communities myself online, like Nestla or SPI communities for entrepreneurs or kind of like people who are into neuroscience or whatnot, like finding our niches and like finding our people. Um, in terms of roadblocks, I would say maybe there's maybe similar roadblocks to the ones that creators running communities have now it's kind of how do you help build a habit uh, for your members of you know really making the most of a community um how do you balance this idea of like because you know as a creator as a community manager the value you bring to your members you know you're you're leading specific uh, specific programs you have a lot of great plans for your members but how do you kind of balance that with the time your members have to check the community what they're actually doing in there like I guess it's more like an expectation thing of like, you know, um, just having a, a realistic view of like what level of engagement you're going to get in your community, I think is maybe a bit meta, but I think it's something that <laughs> we all experience as community managers. It's like, 
Yeah. Um, we all want more engagement, more participation, more people participating in discussions, joining, you know, but at the same time, um, you know, members engage in the ways that they can in the ways that they find valuable. And it's also quite seasonal. So it's how do you realize that and then take action on the back of that, I would say is the first, I mean, not a roadblock, but like a mindset kind of like, yeah, to grapple with if that makes sense. I don't know if you, you know, if you have a similar. Yeah, I, I certainly, I talk with clients all the time when I'm working with clients as a consultant and also in my own community to try to remind myself that engagement it means different things and not necessarily that we want or don't want engagement, but we want to solve problems and we want to help people connect. So if a community is not, you know, doesn't have a thousand posts or a million responses, that's okay. No big deal. What that means is that maybe people are getting value in other ways than that. Okay. So I think that's something that a lot of people, and, and this is not, this is not social media, like mm -hmm. online intentional platforms are not social media. They're just different in so many. I love that. 100%. And, yeah. And so we we can't compare those things. It's like apples to oranges kind of a thing. 100%. And I think that's definitely a mindset shift that you got to have when you're building community. And if you, specifically if you're a creator with you somebody who who's used to this world of audience building is you're not going to measure the value of your community with the number of likes and comments that posts get. It's going to be much deeper than that. You're going to have to look at the level of connections between your members um, you're going to have to look at, you know, maybe you have some passive lur lurkers, people who are, who are not really actively participating. They're like, maybe the shy students at the back of the classroom who are really soaking in everything that's happening and they're getting value. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, in circle, we have this really awesome tool called activity scores, and it's like a way to measure engagement in all of this, those different dimensions. What's, uh, the, the contribution and the participation that you see, uh, and also the level of connection, the things that are happening in the background, are members sending each other DMs or a group or starting group chats? Are they connecting? Uh, again, if you take the the classroom example, are they connecting outside of the classroom and like creating study groups or whatnot? And so I really find that it's probably another roadblock or another challenge. It's kind of really understanding the the different levels of engagement and and not taking the visible part of the iceberg as your necessarily your, your compass or your guide at all times because your members might get might, might be getting a lot of value and you might not be even realizing that if you're yeah just, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah that's like it's like podcasting like i uh, i will podcast and people uh, adapt episodes and you know people will contact me and they'll be like deb it's like i know you and i'm like that's so amazing like the the connection that we can make through yeah these digital um, platforms and online things. And yeah, I've had clients and, you know, myself experienced that people come into a community and they might be really quiet. And then like, if I get to talk to them like six months later or a year later, they're like, Deb, I've been loving your content for the last year. I just can't get enough of it. It's great, but they've never posted or never said anything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so true. Um, so I'm curious about the community strategy now pivoting to like the circle focus, like what did that, what does that look like? And how, do, how many times do you change your strategy around what you do in, in circle? Cause I'm really curious about that too. That's such a great question. So our strategy keeps evolving because our product and our company keeps evolving. Like when I joined the team, we were 10 people, 11 people, and now we are 150 or 160. Uh, I'm losing That's amazing. Track. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. The, the team is in a different place and uh, we're serving very different types of customers. And so I guess maybe the main change, or what I can tell you is when I joined three and a half years ago and when it was the start of Circle and, and uh, the the strategy, or I guess the, the, the priority for what I was doing as a team of one, because I didn't have a team at the time, was how do we figure out how to to teach our, our early customers how to really just build the foundations for their community, how to make the most of the product, how not to how not to overthink, how to like. So that was one part which we then continued to really focus on for about a year and a half, two years, by you know providing education, providing discussion spaces, helping people share like examples of what they're building to inspire each other. Um, but in the early days, also just the community at Circle, our customer community, because again, I should probably say, if you're a customer of Circle, if you're building community on Circle, you get invited to this customer community that has, you know, a bunch of resources, opportunities for you to learn from others, to see what others are building, et cetera. So that's our customer community. And in the early days, um, 
we were using that community as a way to really have some, some fast feedback loops with our customers. Mm -hmm. And what was happening in there was really shaping very directly and very quickly what the product was becoming. Cause you know, it was just a team of 10 or 10 of us, right. Um, you know, figuring out, okay, like here's like how we're thinking of building a paywalls feature. Like, what do you think? Okay, great. Like, give me some feedback. Now the strategy is still, is still relevant. We're still, in fact, we just celebrated um, in within one year, the past year, we implemented a hundred features that were, that came directly from the community. So a hundred features that our customers have suggested or have That's like, incredible. Asked, <laughs> yeah, really awesome. Like, again, really, uh, we were community powered, you know, products and business. Right. But I would say this, this strategy is now a little bit more something that's happening in the background. It's like, it's in, it's in our DNA that what's happening in the community, what our customers are sharing is what's going to help us shape the product, our priorities, our roadmap. But now a big um, a big focus and a big new priority for my team in the next you know 12 to 18 months and beyond is how can we teach community building at scale? How can we, because obviously we have, you know, a, a, a bit of an advantage here. We have tens of thousands of community builders, um, you know, who are building some of the most interesting community businesses on the planet on Circle, uh, a lot of them have figured out a few things about what it takes to build engagement, to, to nail onboarding, to monetize, to create more and more connection between their members. And, you know, a lot of them are sharing their best practices, their wins in our community. But now my team is really focused on how do we just extract all those great learnings, put them into frameworks that can help uh, as many community builders as possible, whether or not they're on circle. Mm -hmm. so that was a very long answer to your question, but like from a community strategy, really more focused on helping people use the products and shaping our product roadmap to something that's a little bit more, how do we educate the next generation of community builders by sharing the best of what others have figured out on circle? Yeah, I think that's such a great uh, cycle to kind of clarify because I've seen this and I use mighty networks and um, I've seen this a lot in the mighty host community is that they, we, you know, hosts will share what they're learning and then will, um, and the product team will actually take those things into account and things like that. And so I, I think what's really great about any customer community, whatever platform, whatever you're doing is that's the benefit of a community. <laughs> um, because uh, if you have, you know, a product that you're testing out, those are your ideal customers and they can give you that feedback right away. And then it's up to, you know, the team to decide on evaluating, okay, which one of these things is really something we're going to prioritize and, 100%, um, yeah. and which one of these things makes sense to like, maybe put on to a little bit later. And yeah. obviously you have to have some kind of a prioritization going through that. What are maybe the best newest features if you could say like maybe the top couple features that you've you've added because of these customer communities is there any experience that you remember or yeah so one of the top one that's been requested for as long as i can remember uh, that we just launched is the ability to to tag content to have topics which might seem like an easy thing to implement but it's actually pre a pretty big feature that touches upon navigation and everything so right. now our customers are able to really just go back to their community structure and like implement those tags those topics to help their members like find the content they're looking for that's just one of many examples there there are many like there are bigger features as well obviously but i think where what we've really nailed at circle with our so we have this like feedback space in our community. We're also running product betas. I feel like it's also this continuous improvement. So when we launch, when we ship something, it's 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 the beginning. It's not the end, right? It's then, okay, we've just launched a new live stream feature. I mean, that was ages ago, actually, but like one when, when that happened, um, then the, the cycle of feedback started about how do we improve? Like, okay, people want to raise hand feature. People want this to be a bit more like Zoom. How do we make it, you know, mm. how do we evolve the this core feature that's not part of our our toolbox uh, with with the feedback from from customers. Um, there is you know another big thing that's going to happen, but I don't know if I can really talk about it. But I'm just going to say gamification, and I think by July, by the time this podcast <laughs> comes out, it will be either out or about to be out. So, <laughs> um, you know, helping community builders find um, you know um, kind of like really meaningful ways to to gamify engagement in the community and to reward. Um, the the right behavior. So again, not not something that's out right now, but that's something that's been a topic of discussion in the community that we've re really kind of approached and discussed with our customers. Um, kind of like to make it fun. Yeah, hundred percent. 
how do you make community fun for both the host and the members? That's what I want to know because we as a host want to have fun too. <laughs> oh, I love this question. I think keeping it, I think not being afraid to change your rituals, your programs, I think, you know, keeping it interesting by experimenting with different formats. So we have, I think five or six different event formats in the circle community, you know, from the show and tells where customers share like their communities and how, they, how they're built to the product workshops, to more, you know, smaller types of events, to boot camps and challenges where people learn together and build together. And I think part of what makes the role of a community build, I mean, my role fun in, in, in any case and, and my team's uh, day to day is coming up with those innov innovative formats to create the conditions for people to help each other build thriving communities. And I think that means always, always reinventing yourself and trying out new things, I would say is the way to, <laughs> one of the ways to make it fun and keep it fun. <laughs> what do you think? Any other Some, tips? I, I, I would say tips? sometimes <laughs> people like new ideas. Other times people just want to make things easy. I think I like um, the opportunity to make things easier for people and myself included. So that might mean um, less, like kind of less is more situation. Yeah. So I've really found that to be a value for both the host and the the members of saying, okay, well, here's what we really want to focus on right now. 100%. Um, and, you know, this is our focus for this month or this year or whatever, because I feel like that way, um, Anyway, if it can be helpful to like, I, I love that. Demise. Simplifying. And this is not something, again, we are a team now and we have obviously different things that we're doing on a recurring basis because we get some support. But, you know, as a team of one, when I started, you know, keeping it simple was so key. And that's what we were telling our, our customers, our, our community builders to, to do every single day, you know, pick the, the signature gathering, the one ritual of the one program that you're going to hone in on in the next three to six months and then really hone in on that and, and get feedback from your members, iterate on it before you move on to something else or before you try to like, you know, have this buffet of things that you offer when you, you know, it's always, it's just always better to focus on one thing and really nail that thing before you, you expend too much. And I think this is something that might be a bit of a, of a, again, meta thing here, but we always try to do too much for our members. So we are, we are trying to, which is, can be a good thing over deliver, you know, yeah even more and more value while sometimes they just want that one thing right yeah so. sometimes we don't need to do so much hand holding it really depends on on the experience and that's trial and error and trying to see like what works so and yeah a community that's ten thousand. that's going to be that's going to be a challenge to get those um that's a lot of people is there any specific strategy that you're attempting to see if works or is that still something you're figuring out well Definitely my team is doing a fantastic job with, so we have a wonderful uh, product, uh, product manager, community manager, senior community manager now, Pedro, who was also a customer at the time. He is uh, incredible because, you know, we have all those customers asking questions. We have our events. We have so many things happening in the community and he's really built some systems that have helped him and the team, uh, you know, make sure that we provide a great value to our customers. So things like automations and workflows, um, you know, he uses text expander, like he, he has like all of his templates for responses saved, um, databases, like, again, this is, this might sound like some people might already be doing that, but you know, when, when, you know, making sure that you keep track of all of your best resources or the discussions in the community that are really relevant that, you know, you're going to keep coming back to or, or share with customers, with members or internally in the team, having those handy in a guide or in a database or clipping them somehow, um, those are really the things that come to mind, I think. And at the end of the day, it comes, it comes back to, you know, building the right team, having the right support in place. Even if you're a team of one, you know, you can have some support. You can make sure that you work with your top members, have some, maybe a super user program or an ambassador program, or how do you get the support that you need to look after the community? And cause you don't have to do, to do it alone. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, mate, thank you, uh, Mathilde, for being here today. I'm so thankful that you've been able to share some really great tips for our for the audience. Uh, hopefully, if you're listening, you got benefit of that. If you're a Circle member, I'd love to hear uh, from you uh, as well as um, if you're just a community builder, always the doors open, always open for my email. So please send me an email. If you liked this, please subscribe and share. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.
Bye. Thank you so much, Deb. That was really fun. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.